Hi, my name is Ashish and in this video we will see how to create Azure Load Balancer. Well, in the coming uh, few videos, we'll learn about the three ways to distribute network traffic, particularly in Azure Load Balancer, Traffic Manager and Application Gateway. Azure Load Balancer delivers high availability and network performance to the applications and uh, Azure Traffic Manager allows to control the distribution of user traffic to the service endpoint and the application gateway is a web traffic load balancer that enables you to manage traffic to the web application well all of these sounds quite similar but uh, in this video we will see how to create a public load balancer that helps load balance virtual machine as far as standard load balancer only supports a standard public IP address when you create a standard load balancer, you must also create a new standard public IP address that is configured as the front end, which is known as the load balancer front end by default for the standard load balancer. So let me just quickly log on to the portal and create a public load balancer. I am logged on to the portal and as always, I'm going to click on create a resource. And I'm going to go to networking. Then I'm going to look for load balancer. Come on. All right. As always, I get the subscription option. I'm going to create a new resource group. I would name as uh, my resource group uh, LB for the load balancer name would be my load balancer the look region I would go with East US Okay, East US, it says type, you want to go for internal or the public, here and I'm going to select public, if you would see, you can use internal load balancer to balance traffic from private IP addresses, public load balancer can balance traffic originating from public IP addresses, you can follow the Microsoft documentation for more and the SKU size, I'm going to go with standard, there's a difference between the pricing tier it says standard load balancers is secure by default this means network security groups are used to explicitly permit and whitelist allowed traffic if you do not have an NSG on the subnet or NIC of your virtual machine traffic is not allowed to reach this resource okay so what would be the public IP address name. I'm going to select create new public IP address to be on the front end. I'm going to name it my public IP. Availability zone, I'm going to go for zone redundant. Add of IVv6, I'm going to say no to it. And if you would have a look at more options, I get tags here. I don't want to use tags. I'm going to review it for the validation check. Okay, I'm going to click on create. It's initializing the deployment. I'm going to pause it and come back as soon as it is done. All right, my deployment is completed. I'm going to click on go to resource here. It will take me to my load balancer. Okay, now I'm going to create one uh, virtual network to continue with this lab. I'm going to open up a new window here. I'm going to go to the portal.azure.com. I'm going to create a resource again I'm going to go under networking then I'm going to click on uh, what I can do here as well 
virtual network it will become the same thing I'm going to click on create and in the resource group I'm going to select the same resource group that we created I would select my VNet I'm going to go with East US here under the IP address I'm going to click on next this is the address space of my VNet 10.0.0.0 slash 16 and this is my subnet range 10.0.0.0 slash 24 and I'm going to click on it and I'm going to name it my backend subnet I'm going to click on save here security I'm going to go with default again default and now I'm going to click on create it's creating the virtual network now I'm going to create virtual machines to to have them back end of my load balancer again I'm gonna go to portal dot you can do it in the same window I just like to do it in the new tabs I found it more convenient click on the virtual machines because we're gonna create virtual machine here I'm gonna click on create virtual machine I'm going to place it in the same uh, resource group, the LB resource group that I created. Virtual machine, let's give it my VM1. I'm going to keep it under East US. This would be my 2019 data center. There you go. and I'm gonna go with the normal size I don't want any for this I'm gonna select HTTP and let me give it to the username for me to log in Desk. default I'm gonna go with the networking here in networking I'm gonna select I'm gonna select one uh, public IP that would be would be standard let's create a new public IP within this tab and let's name it my pip1 I'm gonna go with the standard SKU but make sure that uh, doing this lab you are selecting the standard that's why I'm creating a new one all right go to management And I'm going to click on off for everything and advanced review create I'm going to create two VM and with the same thing and for that VM I'm going to select my VM2 but I'm going to create a new public IP address that would be my 
pip2 I'm going to create it with the same configuration same resource group and everything this is getting created all right so my VM2 this is also done if I go to my resource I have two VMs now all right so we have a virtual network we have a load balancer we have two VMs now I'm going to install IIS so I'm going to go to my VM1 and VM2 one by one I'm going to install IIS on them so if this is my VM1 I'm going to copy the public IP address I'm going to to MSTSC I'm going to paste it here click on connect it'll take some time and let me enter my username and password okay I'm going to click on OK. Do this until the time it's coming up. I'm going to copy this. Do this. Log on to VM2 side by side. Just trying to save some time. OK. All right, VM1, both of the VMs here, VM1, VM2, VM1 is up. Let's install IIS. Open up the PowerShell. Installing Windows feature, you can run the PowerShell command or you can do it through the PowerShell as well. Whatever you like. Okay. Command would be to have install dash Windows feature web dash server. Let's see how it goes. Let me run this on another server as well. Install Windows feature web dash server. It's going to take some time. Okay, it's installing. I'm going to pause and come back after it is done on both the VMs. Okay, it went well on this one. Let me check the second one. Okay, so IIS has been installed on both the machines. I'm going to minimize it. And now, I'm going to go to my load balancer and create the load balancer resources. So, now on, we'll configure the load balancer settings for a backend address pool and a health probe and specify, and specify a load balancer rule. So if you, are at, uh, if you are at your load balancer and if you just click on the backend pools under settings tab, click on add, you can have the backend pool name, my backend pool. virtual network select the virtual network that we created it's my vnet right ip version ipv4 virtual machines now we're going to add vm1 and vm2 along with their corresponding ip addresses and then select add so click on add here it comes up with this
IP address, IP config one, click on add. You get two of them here. You click on add here. Here, so it's validating. It's going to add these two VMs inside this load balancer so that they can end as the backend pool servers of this load balancer that we created. It's doing its thing. I'm going to pause and come back. Okay, so I have my backend VM pool and I have two VMs inside the backend VM pool. Now I'm going to create a health probe to allow the load balancer to monitor the status of the application. We need a health probe. The health probe dynamically adds or removes the VMs from the load balancer rotation based on their response to health check. So health probe will do a health check on these two VMs to make sure that they are running in a healthy state. So I'm going to create one health probe here. So if you will click on health probe under settings tab and if you will click on add and name it my health probe and the protocol that we're going to use would be HTTP port would be 80 it would be the path as a backslash for requesting health status from the back end point let's go with the 15 second interval and the two is the number of unhealthy threshold for the consecutive failures from my VMs on the back and I'm going to click on OK. It's creating a probe here. All right. Your health probe has been added. Now I'm going to create a load balancer rule. So you're going to click on load balancing rules here. So a load balancer rule is used to define how traffic is distributed amongst the backend uh, virtual machines. We define the front end IP configuration for the incoming traffic that any traffic that would be incoming to this load balancer would hit the front end IP public IP that we created along with the required source and the destination port. And I'm going to create one rule here. It's name going to be my load balancer rule web and that rule would listen on port 80 in the front end load balancer and the sending load balancer network traffic to the backend pool also using port 80. So it would accept every connection on the front end IP on port 80. It would route that traffic to the backend virtual machines on the port 80. So this would be my load balancer rule web IPv4 front end IP I created one pip so it will gonna take it so it's gonna accept the traffic on port 80 TCP port 80 backend port also it's gonna use port 80 and I have in backend pool I have two virtual machines my backend pool health probe I just created on port 80 session persistence I'm gonna select none I'm gonna go with the default settings I'm gonna click on OK it's saving the load balancer rule here Okay, perfect. Now let's let's test the load balancer. So if you're gonna go to the overview, I mean on the on the load balancer, this is the public IP address here. Copy it. And if I'm gonna open one private window, and I'm gonna paste it in the browser like this. hit enter this is the default page that you see for the IIS server because it's hitting the traffic onto my IIS server which are uh, present presently at the present at the backend pool so let's say I go to my virtual machine one and I stop the VM okay let me go to my virtual machine one and I'm let me stop this 
I'm hitting stop on VM1 here. I'm going to hit on yes. It's stopping my virtual machine and the name is my VM1. Let it stop. And you will see that after this VM is stopped and uh, I'm going to hit this public IP again of my load balance and you will see that the request would be served by VM2 because that is also loaded up with IIS. Right, it has successfully stopped my virtual machine and if I go to my page, I'm going to let me copy it, open a new tab, hit enter. I again see this. Right. And let's say if I stop both of the VMs, I'm going to stop two as well. I'm going to wait till it stops. All right. Both the VMs are stopped. Let me go here. Let me copy it. Let me paste it. Hit enter. Let's see what happens because both of the backend VMs are stopped. So it's going to try to do it. See you cannot reach this page because both of the VMs are stopped. So that is how you create a load balancer. You add the health probe, you add the backend pool server, you add the load balancer uh, network rule to get the traffic inbound on the front end IP configuration and then serve that traffic onto the backend real virtual machine. So I hope this was informative to all of you guys. And if you have any queries, please mention them in the comment section and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Have a great day.